What's going on, you lot? Kia ora, Oh! I hope I said that right. I hope I said that right. <laughs> Well, what's going on you lot in it here? Myself right in it here. Back again. Yeah, look, I'm back here, yeah, baby. Listen. Today, yeah, we're doing up some more geography now, innit? Yeah, we're going on the other side. I know we've done a lot about Samoa and you know the Australian side of stuff. But we're going to New Zealand now, baby. We're gonna see what's going on in New Zealand, yeah. Aotearoa Aotearoa. I hope I said that right. So we're doing geography now. New Zealand, Aotearoa. You get me in it. We're gonna get this one popping in it here. Find out a little bit more of what's going on the New Zealand side. I believe that's where the Mau mainly the uh, the Maldives are. To get me in it here. So boom, we're gonna get it popping. We're gonna do these things, yeah. Listen, I know that you know I get a couple of families watching this and all of that kind of stuff. So listen, I'm gonna try my best to tone down on the swearing in it here. Yeah? Just on these type of videos, you get me in it here. I need to be, I need to be a good boy and, and not be, not be a bastard. Ah! Can you see my life? I've already started swearing and the thing hasn't even begun. Shit. Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh! Ah! Yo! <laughs> but boom, let's get this one cracking then, innit? Yeah? Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe. Yeah? Bang the like button. Bang the subscribe thing. Join the gang. Join the fam. You know the thing set, really? You know the thing set, man. Yeah? So boom. My thing started, yeah. Let's get it cracking, innit, yeah. Shout out to the geography now, guys, innit, yeah. Go show them some laugh me, some, some laugh me, please, innit, yeah. But boom, without further ado, let's run this thing. Now, when I think of New Zealand, really, only one word seems to come to mind. What Tao matafaka tani hana ko au au o tamatea tsuri kumu kaka hiki maonga horo nuku pokai fenua kita natahu. Nani? What the fuck? Proceeded. What? I, there's no way. That, there's no way. That's a real word. Really, only one word seems to come to mind. Tao matafaka tangi hanga ko au. Tao mata. Oh, yeah, I'm not even. Yeah, I'm not, definitely not even trying. Let's just let him run. Tao o tamate tsuri pu kaka piki maunga horo nuku pokai fenua kita natahu. Go down. Okay. It's time to learn. Someone let me know what that means, if that's even a real word, fam. Geography. No! Hey everyone, I'm your host, Barbs. New Zealand What's is up, one of those Bobs? places where a few people have made a powerful image for themselves. Yeah. It's one of the last places on Earth to be discovered and inhabited by humans. And when they arrived, it was unlike anything anyone had ever seen. Mostly because there were these massive 12 feet tall bird monsters. What? We'll get into that in a bit, but first... <laughs> New Zealand is not only a key player in the ocean nations, but a geographic anomaly. As in, half the time when you look at artwork or decorations or newscasts or even educational books, New Zealand is forgotten from the map. Kiwis even joke about it. Even their government website 404 page not found website pokes fun at it. Anyway, New Wait, Zealand what? or even their government website 404... You're seeing this page because you can't find the page you're looking for or because there's a problem with <laughs> that's, that's silly. Page not found, website pokes fun at it. Anyway, New Zealand or Aotearoa is located in the southwestern Aotearoa. Pacific Ocean about 1,200 miles or 2,000 kilometers off the coast of Australia and about 600 miles or... Bro, Australia's massive, Rue boy. Jesus Christ. Well, in comparison anyways, mad. 1,000 kilometers from the nearest major islands of Fiji, Tonga, Fiji. and New Caledonia, Tonga. meaning technically France is their closest neighbor. The country is made up of two main large islands, aptly named the North Island or Te Ika a Maui, which makes up about four. Uh, this guy and his pronunciations is gonna kill me, fam. Fiddlesticks. Yeah. Fiddlesticks. <laughs> Te Ika a Ma a Maui? Wait, hold on, let me hear this guy. Made up of two main large islands, aptly named the North Island or Te Ika a Maui. Te Ika a Maui, okay, North Islands. Te Ika a Maui. Te Ika a Maui, okay. Which makes up about 42% of the landmass, yet holds about three quarters of the population. And oh, the larger, yet less populated South Island or Te Waipo Namu. Te Ika a Maui. Maui. And Te Waipo Namu. <laughs> te Waipo Namu! Ikoze! About 56% of the landmass. Hold on, I've, I've noticed in it, it, it was the same with, um, you know, it was Samoa as well, wasn't it? Yeah, they, even native Samoa was split into two islands. Like, yo, motherfuckers love this double island stuff, in it? Yeah, just traveling back and forth from the islands. Okay. And it's the same with New Zealand, it's a split island. You got north and south as well. 
landmass. The remaining 2-ish percent of the landmass is made up of hundreds of interior and outlying islands, 33 main ones that are either around the main two islands, like the largest one, Stewart Island, just south of Stewart South Island. Then you have the outlying island chains, like the northernmost Kermadec Islands, the yeah. easternmost Chatham Islands, and the sub-Antarctic southernmost point, the Campbell Islands. The country yeah. is a unitary state divided into 16 councils, 11 regional councils, and 5 Holy unitary... Oh, is that where Auckland is? Yeah, rotted. She, I don't know. I thought Auckland was was way bigger than that. Still, Nelson, Marlborough. What else do I know? Gisborne, I don't know Gisborne. And M Manawatu, Wang, eh, Wanganui. Cheese. Manawatu, Wanganui. Are you dumb, lad? Are you crazy? Taranaki, hey, I love these names, so I ain't gonna hold you. Waikato, hey, hey, don't gas me, blood. Regional councils. The Chatham Islands act as their own special territorial authority. The second largest city, Wellington, is the capital, the southernmost capital in the world. However, Auckland yeah. up north is the largest city, which holds about blah, a third blah, of the blah, entire blah, population Auckland, of the country, with the largest and busiest airport, Auckland International. Yeah. Otherwise, Christchurch on South Island is the third largest city and holds the second busiest airport. The city is called Christchurch, Nick. What? National. Otherwise, Christchurch on South Island is the third largest city and holds the second busiest airport, Christchurch International. But wait, that's not all. But the sovereignty wait. claim extends even further, and then you get the three New Zealand realm territories and free association island nations. These are Tokelau, the Cook Islands, and Niue. Tokelau. Oh, Cook Islands, yo. Tomorrow, I'm going to be doing the Cook Islands. I should have said this in the intro, in it, yeah? But tomorrow, I'm going to be doing the Cook Islands, in it, yeah? So, boom. Yeah, boom is considered a non-self-governing these are Tokelau, the Cook Islands and Tokelau, I like that flag though, I ain't gonna hold you Tokelau, I ain't never heard of no Tokelau before though Anyway, Tokelau is con Tokelau, oh snap Considered a non-self-governing dependent territory, it also has a territorial dispute with American Samoa over Swains Island, whereas the Cook Islands and Niue are labeled as self-governing states in free association with New Zealand. Finally, you have the Ross Dependency, which is New Zealand's claim to Antarctica, which of course under the Antarctic Treaty does not actually fall under their sovereignty, but you know, a lot of people like to say they have something what? they can't. Whew, for a nation what? that doesn't even show up half the time on maps, there's a lot going on here. Trust but wait, me. if New Zealand is just an island in the middle of the Pacific, which continent is New Zealand? Zealand a part of? Ah, good question. That is a question that has kind of stumped cartographers for centuries. In the simplest sense, categorically, New Zealand is part of the broader region known as Oceania, which is basically just Australia plus everything else in Melanesia, Micronesia, and Polynesia. Yeah, Technically, Oceania. Australia and New Zealand together are called Australasia. What? Australia, New Zealand, Australasia. Australasia for the Polynesia. Australasia, the, the, the Polynesia. However, it's weird because New Zealand doesn't lie on the same continental shelf as Australia. This has led to the consideration of New Zealand belonging to a newer subregion known as Zealandia, what? classified by some dude in the 90s as Bruce. either a continental fragment or a microcontinent. Zealandia, what the? These the, these sound like some flipping made up names. I'm not gonna lie, like someone just just added some some next. Prefix, not prefixes, is to the end of it, and then just boom, Zealandia. Sounds like some some mythical realm or some shit, boy. Made up of a submerged continental crust shelf that expands all the way from New Caledonia to an empty spot in the ocean just south of the Campbell Islands. 93% of Zealandia is submerged, with New Zealand being the largest protruding segment. Either way, however you want to categorize it, New Zealand is. Hold on, so Zealandia is 93% of it is merged, and the only thing that's not. Um, submerged is not submerged is uh, New Zealand so why are you calling this thing land when it's underwater it's underwater it's not land it's clearly underwater so how can it be land idiots these people these are geography people and, and they are telling me that this thing is underwater but they are calling it land eh? idiots merged with New Zealand being the largest protruding segment either way however you want to categorize it New Zealand is kind of strange Wait, go back to the self-governing island thing. Do they belong yeah, to well. New Zealand or are they full countries? Good question. It's uh, kind of like this. Okay, guys, look, the British just kind of put you under my jurisdiction, so I guess that means you're all New Zealand citizens, okay? Yeah, but we all have our own languages and customs and want to write a constitution for ourselves. Oh, what the hell? She cute as hell. She got a cute ass face. Goddamn, shuddy. I mean, you know them, you know them palangy fa flavors, huh? You know that? Like, that. <laughs> like what's up, little paheka? No, my say paheka, I mean paheka. Jeez.
falls with free association status. We're basically countries in our own right, but under your overarching sovereignty, I guess. Like, your military can come in for defense, but otherwise we got everything else covered. I mean, okay. guys, I have less than 2,000 people on less than five square miles of what? land on three miles covered. I mean, guys, I have less than 2,000 people on less than... Less than 2,000 people are tough. Whoa, that looks like a crazy little paradise there, if I ain't gonna hold you. Like a little, little close-off section. You know, like in, um, like in Attack on Titan, fam, you know, where they just locked themselves. You know, they got, like, the, the four walls, wall muddy, and all of that kind of stuff there, fam, just in the middle of the sea, bro. Five square miles of land on three islands. I think I'll just right, become a dependent three, territory state. All right, fair enough. Two kind of country. Free association, dependency, and then a claim. Countries with loose ties and one dependent territory country with stronger ties. Got it. Plus, hey, I became the first completely solar-powered nation in the world. Not exactly Whoa, fully functional ties. Sick. Got it. Plus, hey, I became the first completely solar-powered nation in the world. Completely solar-paneled nation. Yo, that's actually, that's, that's pretty amazing, to be fair. Not exactly fully functional sovereign nation state by definition, but yeah, good for you. Some places of interest in New Zealand might include the world's steepest street at a gradient of 38 <laughs> degrees, the National Museum, Auckland, New Zealand might include what? the world's steepest street at a gradient. What the hell? Is someone taking a piss, fam? That is literally as up, that's, that's as hilly as it can get, fam. You end up with some thunder freaking calves, calf muscles walking up there, lad. <laughs> Bombo seeded. Of 38 degrees, the National Museum, Auckland Sky Tower. You can actually jump off of it. The Rotorua Geysers. What? Degrees, the National Museum, Auckland Sky Tower. You can actually jump off. Put that on the list for when I go to New Zealand. Bam! I'm jumping off the Sky Tower. Off of it, the Rotorua Geysers in traditional Maori Village, Boy. Rainbows End, and Splash hey, Planet. Off of it, Maori the Rotorua Geysers in traditional Maori Village, ora, Rainbows ora, ora. End, and Splash Planet. The International Antarctic Center, Hobbiton. So many wine fields. <laughs> end and Splash Planet. The International Antarctic Center, Hobbiton. Hobbiton. Rod, right. ain't now where where. What's my man flipping Frodo and them man? You know Frodo and, and his man them the Hobbit the Hobbit dons, ain't this ain't this their bits? Like what? It's actually New Zealand, yeah. That is mad. So many wine fields like the Frodo is from New Zealand, blood. I want you ask, Clark fam. Since when? Man did not know. Man did not know. Ones in Marlboro, 90 mile beach, which is actually only 56 miles. Waitomo caves with. Oh shit! That looks amazing. Why two more glow, glow worm? Oh shit, worms! It's always a catch in it. Glow worms, frying pan leg, and the Meraki spherical boulders. And honestly, I could go oh, on and on. Glow these, worms like these, the one. These, these, all these look sensational, bro. What the hell? Ones in Marlboro, ninety miles. That's that's amazing. Mile Beach, which is actually only fifty six miles. Waitomo Caves with that's glow amazing. worms, frying pan leg, and the Meraki spherical wow. boulders. And honestly, I could go on and on with all the wow. natural wonders of this country, but that would. I am very much a natural wonders guy, fam. I love nature, fam. I love all of these kind of sightings, man. That looks amazing. I'm not gonna lie to you. Take like 50 videos and we gotta cram as much as we can in this one. So let's just talk about all the natural stuff of New Zealand, shall we? Now, New Zealand is an outdoors country, world-renowned for its mind-blowingly wonderful landscape displayed in a number of films and movies. Fun fact, the Lord of the Rings gave them so much publicity and tourism what? money that they even have a Minister of the Rings in their parliament. Oh, what? do they now? You wrote the script for the episode. Who knew Mordor was in flipping New Zealand blood? Matting. Episode, and I'm just reading off the teleprompter, so I figured you would know that. I did. First of all, the country is located in the Ring of Fire on the convergence of the Pacific and Australian plates that creates the mountainous southern Alps of the Southern Island. Here you can find the tallest peak, Mount Cook or Auraki, at over 12,000 feet or 3,700 meters. Auraki. Is this the O silent, right? The O is usually silent. I've noticed that. It's our. Uh, we're kind of pronouncing it Araki, Araki. Well, let me not follow this guy's pronunciation of it anyway. Meters. Whereas across the Cook Strait, the smaller Kaweka range can be found on the North Island. This, in return, makes the country subject to earthquakes and volcanic activity. There are about okay. 83 known volcanoes of all types, and the oh, largest oh. active one being Ruapehu on North Island. Ruapehu. Otherwise, you can see other volcanic wonders like the dormant Banks Peninsula on South Island and the eerily perfect circular Mount Taranaki on the west side of North Island. Just to skip away, you find the largest lake, Lake Taupo. In uh Volcanoes in it, they kind of obviously, they kind of like the earth, like just popping a zit. 
I lie. Think about it. Think about that one. I'll give that one to you for free. When you actually understand it, you realize that it's just the earth just going and just popping and bam! And just bam! And just so happened that the zit underneath is, is full of lava. Taupo Caldera, one of the largest super volcanoes on Earth. From there, the lake is drained by the longest river of the country, the Waikato. Now, New Zealand is interesting because due to its shape, there is no part of the country that is more than about 80 miles or so from the ocean. The flatter valleys on the sides of the mountains are where most people live and produce crops and livestock. Skip a little further west and you get the least inhabited and difficult to access, but most breathtaking part of New Zealand, the Fjordland. Steep Fjordland. cliffs plunging into the Tasman Sea with Milford Sound being the most popular spot. What the, and what the hell did these like get to these to get these kind of images like this is this is very very in depth and the zoom like the focal length is actually mad i'm impressed only one accessible by road. New Zealand ranks as one of the top most landform diverse countries on earth, having everything from alpine forests, glaciers, geothermal geysers. They even have a small desert in the middle of North Island. And on some of the coasts, you have tropical beaches with magnetic black sand containing oh, magnetite. Seriously, I still have some. Check it out. This is from Piha Beach in North Island. Whoa, it sticks on. Now, the one thing about New Zealand that set it apart upon this. <laughs> These guys are dope. I was like, whoa, it sticks on. Discovery is, okay. is that other than two species of bat, the entire island had no mammals prior to human encounter. Now, this is usually the part where Noah comes in, but he had a scheduling conflict that couldn't be here today, so therefore, I saw Min, random Hannah. <laughs> Hannah, take nice. it away. The country is a bird haven with over 200 species, over half endemic to New Zealand. And the funny thing, many of which are flightless. It's like the flightless bird capital. I like this girl's face. I like her face of the world. Species such as the kakapo, the world's only flightless nocturnal parrot, and they have more species of penguin than anywhere else on the planet. At one point a long time ago, they used Moa. to have the moa, a 12-foot tall monster until what? it was hunted by the native mori to extinction. Then you have- <laughs> hunted to extinction, mad. The national animal, the famous kiwi, kiwi, a flightless bird which comes- Oh yeah, why are, why are Polynesians called kiwi or in New Zealand and that? Why, you go, why do they call them kiwis? Like, well, go on, what's the explanation for that one? in five forms on both islands. Known for their hair-like feathers, long beaks with nostrils making them some of the only few bird species that can smell. Otherwise, with flying birds, you have the kia, the world's only alpine parrot. And if you uh -huh. see one, they are curious creatures, unafraid of humans, that love to chew on shiny objects or rubber. Seriously, those guys tried to steal my stuff one time. Outside of the bird world, you can find reptiles like the turatara, which has a third Jeez. parietal eye on the top of its head, or uh -huh. the giant weta, the heaviest insect on earth or the giant weta the heaviest bro listen this is the one thing that keeps me away from new zealand and australia and all of them size in here you lot have some next beasts some next type of animals around there like i don't know what the hell is happening around there but there's all types of weird freaking animals around there and insects and all of that kind of stuff in there. Like, that's what always made me just never have interest in going anywhere near australia or new zealand because rough wildlife is just crazy for me. What, what the hell is this? What the hell looks like a grasshopper, but the grasshopper is eating a, a whole carrot. He's, he's, the grasshopper has turned into Bugs Bunny. He's eating a carrot. Yeah, he's gonna turn around and say, hey, what's up, dog? I say my fist. My fist are up, you, you, you stupid re reptilian bastard. I'll finish you. I don't, me, I don't, I don't play with, with these, these, these stupid, stupid insects. Eh? Me, they're creepy. They creep me out. They creep me out. Look at this one. Eh? Oh, yeah, get off my carrot, eh? insect on earth. Ugh. Resource wise, the country is known for its huge dairy farming and livestock industry. Jader Greenstone what? is a price wise, the country is known for its huge dairy. Sheep outnumber people by about one to seven. What the hell? How much sheep do my have, bro? Why would you ask, Clark? The sheep outnumber people by about seven to one. That's a manting ratio, fam. Seven to one. Ross Claw, imagine the sheep caught a one two bit of sentience and just started trying to overthrow the man. Them like, we'll be pissed, we'll be pissed. Farming and livestock industry. Jader Greenstone is a precious stone mined and sold here, as well, often carved into jewelry or traditional. Oh, I remember the Jade Clubs. Wow, I remember that. Yeah, look, she's got one as well. She's got one. What was it called? Oh, I forgot the names of it, fam. And Mori tools and ornament. Besides all that, though, much of the country makes money through tourism, specifically outdoor tourism, specifically Queensland on South Island. This place offers everything from skydiving, paragliding, Ooh. and zorbing, which is, by the way, the Kiwis invented. And speaking of okay. Kiwi inventions, food. Kiwis are, without a doubt, seafood folk. Native species like Gurnard, Hokie, 
Hake, hapuku, pawa, and crayfish are made into numerous dishes. Cooked, raw, smoked, steamed, battered, and fried with chips. If that's not your thing, some non-fishy kiwi dishes might include things like roast lamb, savory meat pies, hokey pokey ice cream, kiwi style things like roast lamb, savory meat pies, hokey pokey ice cream. Hokey pokey ice cream. What do you ask? What's hokey and poking in this ice cream, man? Ice cream, kiwi style burger, manuka honey, kumara, LNP drink, pavlova cake, and one of the most traditional Mori dishes, hangi. hangi. And speaking of cultural tradition, What's hangi? What's hangi? and one of the most traditional Mori dishes, underground oven cooked meal, they even use geothermal heat to cook. Hangi. Oh. And Nice. Speaking of know. cultural tradition, we go to... Thank you, Hannah. Feel free to follow her on Instagram. No problem. Oh! oh. My phone, nigga. Hannah Rose Bamberg. <laughs> Banks, nigga. Banks. Um. Yeah, that's a thing now. Now, this is gonna be the best part of the episode because the people of New Zealand, known as Kiwis, are the biggest treasure you'll find. First oh, of all... Oh, a Kiwi, someone from New Zealand, yeah. Okay. The country has about 5 million people and often ranks as one of the top 3 ease of business index countries in the world with the least corruption. Business. At somewhere around 74%. <laughs> least corruption. Eh? Come, come over to Nigeria. We'll show you something about corruption. Eh? The country is made up primarily of peoples of European descent, mostly of English, Scottish, and Irish ancestry. About 15% of the country is native Maori, 7% Pacific Islander, and the rest are mostly Asian of various countries like China, Korea, and Japan. Yes, by the hey. way, it's pronounced Maori, not... No. Maori, Maori. Nah, he's chatting wet in it, fam. It's definitely not Maori. Countries like China, Korea, and Japan. Yes, by the way, it's pronounced Maori, not Maori. Maori, yeah, Maori. Yeah. Okay, okay, I son, I son, I cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Came correct this time, I son. Maori. Maori desu. Maori, Maori. They use the New Zealand dollar as their currency. They use the type I plug outlet and they drive I, I, on the left side of the road. Now, we all know that English is the most widely spoken language hey, in the country go, go. with a distinct Kiwi dialect. To outsiders, it sounds just like the Australian one, but they swear it's different. They have some distinct Kiwi words. Here's my Kiwi buddy, Jared, explaining. Bro, it's a beaut. I'm off to the dairy. Is that us? Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can clock this right. Really. Here's my. It's a beauty. It's nice. I'm off to the dairy. I don't know what it was. The dairy, fam. You gonna, you gonna milk some cows, nigga? Kiwi buddy Jared explaining. Bro, it's a good day out, man. Let's go to the grocery. Ah, okay. It's a beaut. I'm off to the dairy. <laughs> it's a beaut. <laughs> I like that. Is that us? Yeah, nah. Jeez, is that us? Hey, I like that. I said, is that us? Is that us? Yeah. Yeah, nah. Hey, it's a cracker. But it's easy somewhere in the whops. In the whops. No, it's not sad, but it's too far. We're in the countryside. Okay, in the whops, yeah. <laughs> okay. Aye, it's a cracker, <clears throat> but it's ages and we're in the whops. Egg, you're taking the piss. It's I close as. Chuck in your jandals and it'll be a piece of piss. Your jandals are what? Seriously, it's near. Put on your flip flops. <laughs> your jandals, sandals, and it'll be easy. It'll be a piece of piss. Okay. Whatever then. I don't need <clears throat> to stop rocking me up. Stoked. Sweet as. Nonetheless, there are actually two other official languages of New Zealand, Māori and New Zealand Sign Language, making New Zealand the first country to adopt signing as an official language, even mm -hmm. though only half of 1% knows it. Now let's talk about culture and the whole Māori thing. Ura, ura, the Māori traditionally Māori. come from about 100 or so <coughs> iwi, or tribes, or peoples, spread throughout both islands. Most in the north part of the country, the largest being the Ngāpuhi at over 100,000 people. Their culture is a huge integral factor Jeez, that plays in- Jeez, look at this whole head, traps, bro. Oh, what do you- Bumble seeded, bro. This get a hench, bro. Into what it means. <laughs> Look at big boy behind. <laughs> Go on, dog. Hey. Means to be Kiwi. I mean, instead of hello, you'll often hear the Māori word kia ora as kia ora. a greeting. Most schools yes. teach the Māori language in elementary years, and there are immersion schools as well. In addition, oh, they have a dope. few television channels and radio stations that speak almost entirely in Māori. Today, the Jeez. majority of native speakers are found in the North Island, most heavily concentrated in the Northland and Gisborne and Bay of Plenty regions. That's and speaking of Māori, we cannot do this episode without talking about the haka. Almost yeah. everyone on the island knows one form of the traditional war dance performed by both men and women. 
women, known for its aggressive movements, oh, loud yeah. chanting, oh, and intimidating God. facial expressions. Jeez. Very often it's performed at sporting events. The haka is not only used at games or as a means to intimidate, though. It can be used in a variety of situations, ah, ranging from Kuma. birthday no. parties, funerals, <laughs> even weddings, though. It can Look who I was on this thing, bro. You dumb. It can be used in a variety of situations, Jeez. ranging from birthday parties, funerals, even weddings, where the people Aye. celebrate the union of two people Jeez. happily, on, and baby. everyone. Parties, funerals, even. Yo, I need to watch me a female hacker, bro. Come weddings, hey, where people crazy. celebrate. Jeez. Energy, baby. Union of two Man. people happily, and everyone takes part in it, whether you oh, are yo, ethnically yo. Maori or non Maori. It's a tradition that really unites everyone on the island, regardless of race. Amazing. Pretty cool, right? Love and now that. let's talk about tattoos. Ta actually, uh, let's have another co host do this. Uh, let's see, which options do I have? Who can I select? And uh, let's see, Hannah already did one. Uh, why not I Ken? Can, I can make that. I can make that exactly. That's a video co pilot flipping template. I could make exactly that. <laughs> All right, Ken, take it away. You might occasionally come across someone with kirituhi, kirituhi. or skin art or tamoko, which are face tamoko, tattoos. There's yeah. so much information that goes into this, but basically, Mori tradition did not have a specific written Jeez. script. Instead, oh. that goes into this, but basically, Mori tradition did not have a specific. I love that picture. That is cold. Look at those long cloaks that they're wearing, man. That looks sick. Look at one to the far right. That looks cold, fam. I like the design of it. My broski would love this shit. He loves any sort of. He, I'm gonna get him some flipping. What do you call it? Uh, poncho. He likes ponchos. He likes all types of ponchos. Like, that oh, looks dope, man. I don't know. There's something about these old school native type pictures that just gets me, man. He just, I just, I just, I just, I just like it, man. I like it written script. Instead, they use a documented information and history through a series of wood carvings and tattoos. No two are alike as each person's tattoos told a specific story of who they were. Generally, the left side is reserved for the father's lineage and the right side the mother's. The patterns can describe okay. everything from tribe, rank, work, expertise, at Okay, I'm getting it. Everyone was saying, when I said I wanted to get to tower, everyone was saying, nah, you can't, nah, nigga, you can't do that because we just, the tattoos are specific about your family and your tribe and your generation and all that kind of stuff. I get it now, still, I get it. So it's pattern like that. You get your father's side on one side, your mother's side on one side, and the different symbols represent different things, I, I, I'm assuming. So anyways. Athletic accomplishments and so on. In other news, okay. Kiwis are pretty athletic. You cannot talk about New Zealand without oh, mentioning word. rugby. They Come are three-time World Cup championship winners, Come and on. often when they don't win, Come they on. place in the top three. Thank you, Ken. Feel free to follow him on Instagram. Nah, no thank you. And now it's time to talk about history in the quickest way I can. I'm so biased, fam. Can summarize it. Bird Island, no humans. Mori coming from Polynesia, maybe sometime around the 1200s. Mori Pa settled. Oh, Bird Island, it. no. Before 19 is Bird Island, no humans, yes, yeah, we're done. Ain't that interesting. Ain't that flipping interesting. No humans. Mori come. So Mori's were first to land in New Zealand, yeah? Jeez. Coming from Polynesia, maybe. Be sometime around the 1200s, Mori Pa settlements established, more bird is hunted to extinction, tribal battles for land. Yeah, that's all Hongi Hika and them, man, innit? Abel Tasman becomes the first European to come in contact. They kind of forget about it until the British come in by like a hundred years later. For a while, they just kind of traded with the Mori, inner tribal wars with the new weapons that they acquired by the Europeans, yeah, missionaries, British colony, New Zealand wars, Treaty of Waitangi, controversy with mistranslation, self government within the British Empire. What the hell picture is that? Why is man's face all brocky like that? What gone? My one got for horse horse face out. Oh god no. Nothing. How we see it. The ogre comes into the arms, New Zealand. Nay sir, those arms bear chains. Oh what bombo. Fire, women's suffrage, massive immigration wave, World War One, they play a role in Pacific warfare against German occupied Samoa. World War Two, they play a role again in the Pacific, but this time against the Japanese in Papua New Guinea. Statute of Westminster Adoption Act, Muldoon years, 1980 reforms, 1990s and early 2000s, business really starts to boom, earthquake in Christchurch, and as of writing the script for this episode, the recent unprecedented terrorist attacks in Christchurch of 2019 occurred, which shocked the entire nation and the world. Although horrific and terrible, it must be mentioned and addressed and not glossed over in this episode. Some notable people from New Zealand or of Kiwi descent might include people like Hongi Hika, Hongi Heke, Te Puea Herangi, Maui Pomare, Potatau Te Ferro Ferro, Ernest Rutherford, Kate Shepard, Sir Apirana Ngata, Sir Edmund Hillary, Sir Peter Jackson, Jacinda Ardern, Russell Crowe, Jonah Lomu, yeah. Sir Edmund Hillary, Sir Peter Jackson, Jacinda Ardern, Russell Crowe. Oh, 
Bro, Joe Tab or Sir Colin? Joe Tab, man, like Jonah Lomu, you skeng man for life, we boy. Don't piss me off. Lomu, Sir Colin Meads, Dame Fina Cooper, Flight of the Concords, Bruce McLaren, Catherine Mansfield, Lord. Oh, and the meme page Dolan Dark, I was told. Yeah, quite a few cool Kiwis out there. Which brings us to our next segment, the Kiwi Crew. They're friends. The friend zone. <laughs> Yeah. All right, diplomatically speaking, New Zealand, for lack of a better term, is basically like Australia's Canada. They get along with nearly everyone, and unless if it's a rugby match, it's hard to harbor any animosity towards them. And even if it is a rugby match, it's you like, get okay, you guys can <laughs> you win. You got it. You Just got do that hockey thing it, again. First it. of all, as part of numerous <laughs> international organizations, New Zealand has harnessed an international network of alliances since its inception. For one, South Africa, Argentina, Uruguay, and Chile have had close links as Chile. members of the Convention for the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources. These five nations kind of act as like the southern gateways to Antarctica, and they hold a high level of responsibility when it comes to monitoring the South Seas. China has an interesting, kind of good, but kind of controversial relationship with New Zealand. Not only have Chinese immigrants been living in New Zealand since the 19th century, but in 2008, a bold move with a free trade agreement was established, and today nice. they are the second largest import and export partner. The problem is the housing market. Many Chinese investors have bought out property in metropolitan areas that remain unused and empty for the purpose of real estate that man love doing that bruv what's wrong with these dons fam i was watching some documentary a while ago in it yeah like there's a whole city in china in it yeah where it's just the, the city this building's been bought out but no one lives there fam like these man just love buying probably just for the sake of it like what do you ask relax this mostly applies to Auckland and wellington this has left many Kiwis unable to live in the houses yeah. in their own country. Like, this has imagine? frustrated many of them. Can you imagine, bro? That is cheeky, fam. I don't like that kind of stuff, man. What do you ask? For a long time, leaving them to ask the government for reforms in foreign investment policy. As a former British colony, they've always been closely linked to the UK, and get, UK get, citizens, get, get, often get, get. Scottish, choose to migrate and live in New Zealand. Problem is distance. New Zealand what? is one of the furthest members in the Commonwealth from the UK, what? and over time, the UK relations waned as the UK paid more attention to the EU. Nonetheless, they've grown up, don't need to hold mommy's hand anymore, and they can handle their own affairs. Then we get to the quadfecta, the USA, Canada, and Australia. <laughs> Australia. There is somewhat of an unspoken, unbreakable bond between these four. New Zealand has fought alongside the US in almost every major global event from the 20th century and on. There was a slight hiccup in the ANZUS security treaty in the 80s in which they decided to initiate a nuclear-free zone in their territorial waters. Nonetheless, relations are still strong and they are considered one of the closest allies. Canada and New Zealand are very close though. They both think very similarly and are both Commonwealth nations with the same queen as their technical head of state. Bro, both share similar everywhere. views on the variety of everywhere, bro. issues. Both are the smaller versions of a bigger neighbor that gets all the attention. Business, trade, and tourism is strong between them, and in a way, they kind of love each other for all these reasons. When it comes to their best friend, however, as much as they love to poke fun, mock, ridicule, and spit on each other, they cannot deny that Australia is the closest. Australia even has a clause in its constitution that allows New Zealand to become a part of their country if they should ever want to for Get. whatever reason. Get. Although Get. New Zealand is like, thanks, but no. Nah. Australia is not only the largest trading and business partner, but also has the closest history and culture. The Whoa. two have a unique Trans-Tasman Agreement that states that citizens of each country can migrate and have automatic residency. The two nice. go hand in hand, nice. however, when Australia isn't looking, Canada kind of slips in and they kind of go off on secret dates. Ooh. In conclusion, Ooh, New Zealand be cheating, New Zealand be cheating with Canada. New Zealand got a side thing in it, yeah, that's, that's cheeky, that's hella cheeky. As humanity's last major expedition, you can imagine how the first settlers must have felt when they approached on this unknown world of glaciers, volcanoes, glowing caves, geysers, and giant 12 foot tall bird monsters. Ooh, you don't need- What an amazing time to be alive, yeah, when things are just fresh, yo. Take me to them type of times, innit, yeah, and let's run this game fam, I'd love that. Need Lord of the Rings, New Zealand already is a real life fantasy. Stay tuned, Man. Nicaragua is coming you up next. <laughs> Boom, bro, okay, that's interesting, bro. What's that the geography now, people, them in it, yeah? These lot, these lot, I rate them, I rate them in it, because they allow man to do these videos in it, yeah? So, large of the geography now, in it, yeah? But that's interesting, in it, yeah? I guess I'm, I'm understanding I'm getting a full picture a bit better now, do you get me, in it? I'm getting it. Very just it's all it's all coming together now, you get me in it. And I get I was wondering before what Kiwis meant, but now I know that's just for um, Polynesian people in New Zealand and whatnot. But yeah man, Polyn um New Zealand and Australia are basically brothers, they're just brothers that are just moved are just living in different houses basically, you know, it's all the same family as the people and all that kind of stuff, you get me? So interesting. 
But boom, yeah, that's it for this one, isn't it? Yeah, look, if you got any more information for me on, on um, New Zealand or anything like that, slap it in the comments. You get me? I'm always reading up. You get me in it, yeah? And boom, like I said, tomorrow man's gonna have a video on the Cooklands. You get me in it, yeah? So look out for that one, innit? Yeah, we're going to the Cooklands next, cook next innit? I forgot. There was a one Donnie who been pestering me to do it, fam. So boom, look, my G, look, I'm sorry. It's been time, but it's coming, baby. It's coming, you get me? My boom, yo, that's it for this one, innit? Yeah, make sure you guys like, share, subscribe. Yeah, bang the like button, bang the subscribe button. Join the gang, join the family. You know that team's set, boy, you get me? Myself, Ray, really the boy, the kid of wonder, done your mom's favorite son, yeah. Real to do, you really check my energy. Here's a baby. Listen, I'm gonna catch you guys on another video, yeah. Bless.